not have to be good. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles across the desert, repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. You do not have to be good. Well, welcome. Uh, thank you very much for being here today. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the second in a series of these presentations called Indecent Exposure. And I'm going to be talking about shame as the emotional core of compulsive and addictive behavior. And when I'm talking about shame, I'm not talking about healthy shame. I'm talking about uh, toxic shame, which was probably most elaborately described in some of John Bradshaw's early work, Healing the Shame That Binds You, and, and other, other people that have contributed to this field. And toxic shame being this feeling that we're flawed and defective, that there's something the matter with us, that is such an unbearable state of being that uh, we just need to escape it any way that we can. And uh, I'm going to put forward at least the premise that not the s only explanation, but one of several explanations for the complex nature of addiction is this core of emotional pain and shame that causes us to look outside of ourselves for something that to make us feel better or to feel different or to feel nothing at all in some cases depending upon the drug or activity that you should happen to choose.